moment. Welcome, welcome to Thriving as an Empath. I didn't realize there was a bunch of clutter behind me. Welcome to the not, welcome to real life, right? Because real life happens. Hello, okay, yay. Welcome, welcome. And so uh, this is the intimate night of healing that we get to just spend some time together and enjoy each other and practice and do exercises and share whatever has been coming up this week because I know a lot of things bubbled up to the surface, some good, some probably awareness and things like that. So um, I want to just open it up first um, to anybody who wants to share. This is gonna be very much a night for you guys. Um, I've been talking at you the past five days all last week, so this is very much a chance for you guys to share and to ask questions and to get any more support that I can give you tonight um, in a more personalized way. So uh, we'll see if anybody, um, let me just open up Facebook really quickly to make sure that Sometimes people go into Facebook if they are having trouble getting on. Um, so I just want to take just a second to do that. And I'm going to see. All right, now that all of that is out of the way, I don't know if Terry's having technical difficulties as well. So let's see. Do you want to just raise, like, so I can see your hand? Does anybody want to share anything? to start with? Maybe, Lacey? Is that your? No? I'm just trying, um, no. Okay. Okay, here we go. Okay, I will mute. All right, hello, hello. We haven't started officially yet. And Terry, is that you, the 909 number? Yep. Okay, you found a way to join in. <laughs> yeah. Okay, perfect. So um, I think there's a way for you to raise your hand if you want me to unmute you, but I'll just kind of chime in. If there's anything that you want to share while you're unmuted, you're welcome to. Otherwise, I can give you a second. Um, I wanted to. I wanted to be able to see you, but I can't see. I don't see you. So in order to see me, you did it just the second before when you were on the video. You. Um, yeah, but I couldn't. I couldn't hear you then. Uh, try again. Because what happened is you're on the phone number right now rather than the Zoom. Right. So, okay, I'll try it again. Yeah, try it again, and it might just work. We're all kind of having some technical issues with it. <laughs> I <laughs> yeah. could tell by I could tell by the look on your face. Yes, uh, Mercury retrograde is in full blast still, and love in it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'll try it again. Bye. Okay, bye. All righty, Diana. Let me uh, dial on audio. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Hello, hello, I see you, Anne. Okay, beautiful. All right, so um, I was sharing that really this night is very much about you guys. You guys who have showed up, you've been showing up all week, you have very much um, invested in sharing your experiences. Okay, Terry, can you hear me now? Maybe, can you hear me? Um, did it give you, okay, I'm going to chat to Terry real fast. Let me do this. Did it give you an option for audio? Maybe if I spelt it right, she would understand what I was saying. Okay. <laughs> okay, let's see. Terry, you are not muted. Hmm. Um, are you on a phone? Has anybody else ever had 
audio issues. Yeah, sometimes dial on audio. Hmm. Diana, what does that mean? It will say uh, dial on audio or dial in, and you have to dial in on the audio. That's what it does on mine anyway. Yeah, um, you should have an audio option by sliding over. I don't know if she can even see my... Hi! Yay! Okay, you should have an audio option by sliding over, yes. Are you on a phone? Yes, okay. Um, so, Dial by audio. Is that the option she should choose? I think so, yes. By audio option. I will keep working on it. Okay. All right. Hopefully, but everybody else can hear me, right? Everybody else is good. Okay. Good, good. All right. So good. Okay. Questions. Does anybody have questions? Does anybody have any questions? Does anybody want to share what was going on this week? Does anybody want to share maybe an experience? I love that your cat, is your cat literally laying right in front of your phone, Diana? It's like, I'm going to soak this up. I love it. Absorb. <laughs> I love it. Okay. Terry's still working on getting her audio going. Um, yes. Let's see. Oh, okay. She'll figure that out. All righty. Okay. So I would, I'm just going to chime in then. So day one, we worked with our inner child. Did everybody see an inner child? Did everybody have that experience? Okay. Did everybody meet a version of their magical mother? Yes. Okay. I'm curious, because all three of you guys, and Terry just joined back in, hopefully she'll be able to hear, um, was it a new inner child and magical mother, or the same that has come before? Anne, I'm going to unmute you. Hello. Hello. <laughs> so it was the same inner child. Okay. that I keep meeting but the magical mother was a little different this time okay. she was all clothed in white and this very sheer like flowing fabric um with just like surrounded by white light so definitely a level up of mm. you know yes of what I've seen before which was really exciting. That is exciting. Just very pure, very calm. So that was really neat. That is very all neat. white I this love time. That. I love that because um, yeah, that when I when I got introduced to the all white magical mother, like I had said, when on Friday when I watched that mm -hmm. video and I went, oh, it's her, <laughs> right. <laughs> that was oh <laughs> yes and it was like yeah oh my gosh she does exist i become her oh my god <laughs> yeah so that's yeah. really exciting because that's something that you are now fully stepping into yes yeah i love it i love it that's yeah. really exciting thanks did she give you different insight it was similar okay. uh, in this in the way that um before again she tells me you already know <laughs> yeah yeah so i love it you already know you already you're already there you just have to realize it basically yeah, yeah. so it's just a matter of stepping into it now yeah yeah that's exactly right well good Good, good. I have more questions for you, but I'll wait. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Lacey. Hi. Did you Hi. have Hi. 
Hi. Hi. So, hi. Did hey, you hi. have a different inner child come than? I had the same inner child and the same magical mother, um, but some things, not the first day, um, but the second day, I woke up and I had a different thing going on and um, it was like group um summer fire energy medicine um kind of group meditation uh thing and my inner child and magical mother showed up in my meditation um and it was like the most joyous experience because here I am and um the meditation went uh very much finding like what does the fire within you, you know, what, what do you need? And, um, they showed up around my fire and started making the whole thing very silly. And it was hard to stay focused on, um, the person leading the meditation. And it kind of, uh, it kind of spiraled off into this other thing. And like, while I, dude, move your head. <laughs> while I, um, finished the meditation and everything I, I did I kind of like a little faster than everybody else Hi. and was just kind Hi. of um drawn to just having fun and remembering that, you know, again, we are these people are us and they're parts of us. And um, so that was really a cool experience to not even really be thinking about you know, my inner child and my magical mother and to have them just go, hey, don't forget we're with you, you know. <laughs> so that was really, it was it was a really cool thing. And I noticed that a lot of my, um, there was a lot of synchronicity in, in a lot of things that I was doing. Because um, I would wake up and, again, be doing, you know, one thing or the other. And they were kind of all very much um, intertwining. Hi. Um, day <laughs> and uh there was actually another day where it seemed like everything was about um you know turning off those negative words and you know turning off all of those self doubts um, and so that was kind of cool too because um it all just kind of blended together and I was like it just reminds you like that's where you're supposed to be Hold on, I think he, hold on, he, he just muted you. Hold on. Unmute. There we go. There we go. Okay. <laughs> I was, I was thinking, I wouldn't know why. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, it was, you know, the whole week again was, it was very much uh, reminding me how things are going on my own journey right now and reminding me that I'm in the right places with the right people. Really absolutely really I love that I absolutely love that that's so exciting thank you so much for sharing and um when I'm just going to share briefly when when Lacey and I did a session together it was very much like more joy more silliness more fun because she had had so much serious like every you know as we like become an adult we put our adult self on and it was really exciting. I think for her, I'm not going to speak for her, but for her to like, oh, I can be silly. I can be like, find the joy. And I love that in a serious meditation of like finding your fire, like they show up and they're dancing around the fire, <laughs> creating chaos. I love that. Like that is so amazing. So before it gets too dark in here, there's no lights in here yet. So, um, I just realized I have to grab lights. Okay, uh, Diana, while I'm doing that, would you like to share? My magical mother or the whole thing? Uh, so who, same little girl, same inner child? Or yeah, the 10-year-old. Okay. But my magical mother was different. Okay, um, I love it. The last time, it was just like a ball of energy. First time was at the festival. And she was just in white. And the next time was a green ball of energy. And this time it was, she was like, it was almost kind of like Moana and Ariel coming out of 
the water and the water being playful and like she's in a sheer lavender dress that's just flowing with like a white veil on with like flowers in her hair oh and, my gosh, I love it. and it was around I was walking on the side of the co uh the water and it was like a little beach cove and we just sat there and then we started playing with the the hand game you know <laughs> oh my gosh I love it <laughs> so yeah we got to play a little bit and she told me pretty much the same thing you know you you're you're getting there baby steps don't overwhelm yourself and get headed the right direction more more affirmations yeah i love that i love that and it's okay to be selfish because i've been being told i've been making things all about me so yeah there's um there's a big um there's a big thing when when we start doing healing work and focusing on ourselves the people around us suddenly go wait it's been all about me for a very long time how dare you not have it still all about me and as ann is now noticing like when her partner is involved with her healing it's not quite as resistant of why are you taking so much time for yourself when we first started after i'd spent some time at ann's house whoo, her and joe were like friction because <laughs> she was really taking time for herself <laughs> but i think that's a really powerful and almost encouraging thing when people say um you know you're you're all about you or you're taking too much time for you it's like oh finally okay i'm not i'm now not over giving that's a good sign of you're no longer over giving i hope so yeah i looked at my husband and i was like am i making this all about me and he says sometimes i do and i think everybody does you know i'm obnoxious i'm out there i'm free i'm do what I want to do and people can understand that. And if I, I will help and help and help. And then as soon as I don't do it the way they want, <laughs> then uh -huh. it's my fault and it's all about me yes. is what it is. Yeah. And that is boundaries because as a empath, we have a very difficult time with boundaries. And there is an aspect of forgetting who we are. Um, I get do your thing now, <laughs> right? Yeah. There's an aspect of when we're an empath, we, we have joined ourselves with the emotions and the um, thoughts and the opinions and the beliefs and the actions of everybody around us for years that when we become our own space that can feel very jarring to those around us yeah and so there is a transitional period you've that you've only been on this journey since September with me. You've been on this journey before, but September was when we start on a journey together. It 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 things your your world gets shaken up a little bit, and I know that. Oh man, <laughs> I know that. So, but I love it. <laughs> welcome, welcome, yay! We have hello, hello, welcome. If you've never used Zoom before and you just joined in, um, at the bottom there is a chat box or you can just kind of wave your hand at me and I'll unmute you and you can say something or share something. So welcome, so glad you're here. Yay. All right. Um, so with this, thank you for sharing, Diana, by the way. Thank you, thank you um so with this uh time together um i really wanted to do a little bit of maybe practice 
Um, because so much of what is, if you know me, you know I'm very much into implementing. I'm not gonna share things with you and then say, see ya, never use them again. I really want for these skills to be practiced because I know how life-changing they are when they're put into effect, when they're used regularly. And um, Lacey is very much seeing that even she's trying to do different meditations with other healers and other groups and they're like popping in the magical mother and the inner child are like, we're still here. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't gone anywhere. And really, it's a matter of really seeing that our inner child has been neglected for a long time and was often neglected or had trauma while they were present in that age and never really got a, the acknowledgement that they really needed. And now that they've been acknowledged, there's going to be what can be, I was just saying to Diana, this transitional period. And that's why I was asking if a new inner child came. Um, I can unmute you whenever you're ready. Um, and so there's this time of allowing for this space of transition, of now that you've met your inner child and your magical mother, there's this space that they're gonna need to be heard for some time. And to not just go, okay, I did the inner child meditation, let's move on. But to really create some space around allowing for, to maybe to create, I tell all the clients that I work with, to create a weekly bath night, to create space every week so it's just you. This was the, the hour that I got when I put my babies to sleep, I would jump into the bath once a week and I would tell my husband, this is it, this is my time because my husband was not able to be present a lot. I had to do a lot of my healing work by myself with managing my babies, working, doing it all. And I figured out that sometimes my bath night got interrupted because he couldn't even handle them waking up after 20 minutes. You know, I sometimes my bath night would just end early. And I very much encourage you that you can do it all. There's, there is a, a level of overwhelm with it, but it's not impossible. And sometimes as babies are little and they grow and they're still little and we want them to grow up faster and they're still little and very dependent on us, this is the perfect opportunity to see in their eyes a reflection of the inner child that is very much needing our attention as well. And so I would use playtime, having tummy time or having playtime or having evening walks or going and just spending time with my, when my kids were really little as a way to actually nurture and bring up my own inner child and playing and using that time for healing. Instead of so often we think, oh, I need to find time for my healing work, or I need to find time for me. And I would have to just make it happen because there wasn't extra time <laughs> for me to find ways to do this. So sorry, it's a little dark, it's getting dark. That's okay, it's gonna be intimate. It's gonna be a cozy, intimate. I, I asked my husband for a lamp, but I think he's in there playing video games and is not reading my texts because that's what husbands do or at least mine. So um, let me unmute. Can you, is it Eloise? Yes, it's pronounced Eloise. I just go by Ella. Hi, Ella. And yeah. so um, you had asked, what do you say? And really, it's open to whatever you want to share. So if there's anything that happened um, this week during the five-day challenge that brought anything up for you and you want to share. I did a lot of talking the past five days of the challenge, so I really wanted to create this night to let anybody who wanted to hop on share. Hi, Anne. Um, well, I, guess I, have, I apologize. I'm not paying attention. What, um, what was going on for the five days? 
Um, we did a driving as an impact challenge. So you're welcome to just join in and experience what's going on tonight and be part of it and just be present. So I'm happy you're here. Well, thank you. Um, yeah, as an empath, it's very draining for me personally. Yeah. Um, my husband is hey. an empath as well. So with Stop both it. of us being like that, um, it gets crazy. Yeah. Because uh, we just we kind mm -hmm. of bounce off of each other and decide what our energies are going to be for the day. And our son is also <laughs> he's also an empath for a child. So he bounces off of us as well, and she she is a healer, Hello. but I think she has a bit of empath as well. So I think she's both, which makes it hard on her. Yeah. Um. So we kind of just work together to try to keep the energy positive as much as we can. Um. I have a lot of trauma from my childhood. I, I heard you talking about that, and um, I definitely want to learn more about. Um, the meditating and oh, yeah, going yeah. to your inner child. I definitely, I definitely need a lot of that. I had a lot of trauma from my childhood. Well, I'm really grateful that you're here, and um, I will definitely send you the the resources so that you can connect with what we've done last week for five days. Because there was a lot of tools, a lot of visualization, a lot of healing that we did last week that helped. Um, really kickstart and get some of these aspects going. And then if you, when you finish seeing those resources, um, so before you go, if you wanna just privately put your email address in the chat box for me, and then I can email you those okay. aspects, okay? Okay, that sounds awesome. Yay. All right. Awesome, thank you so much. I'm so grateful you're here. And yes, I'm sure we'll be doing um, a little bit of, uh, some practice tonight. So uh, Lacey actually just messaged me, I think, maybe saying, let me see. Uh, literally just kicked her off. <laughs> oh no. Okay, perfect. All right, I got it. I'm just gonna copy that real fast and that way I can get you those resources when we hop off of this call together. Thank you, Ella. All right, very cool. So um, do we do this weekly? So um, in the Magical Mothering Group, I've started doing just uh, five-day challenges that I'm gonna be doing once a month. Um, so we just finished up the five-day challenge for July. We're gonna have another one in August. And then we're actually gonna do a 30-day together for September because there's so much that happens in September with school has already started, you're getting towards the holiday. I mean, chaos just happens. And so to connect daily for all of September to really create a strong foundational rhythm in going within and learning new coping skills and all that kind of stuff, being in the flow together um, will really create space for that. And then, um, and then in the new year, I always start a group session and do, I do private coaching all year long, but I always start a group every new year's. Um, and that is an investment that people make in order to work with me for the, the rest of the year. So, um, I highly recommend connecting with Steph weekly though. Yeah. So, <laughs> right. So there is, there is ways of working with me weekly, privately, but then at the new year, I also will start a group aspect that, um, some people can choose if their finances don't allow for them to work with me privately and things like that. So I always have a lot of options in regards of, um, doing that. All right. Yay. Okay. Back on. Yes. All right, it is getting really dark in here. Okay, you know what, guys? You got to come with me for a second. I'm All right. Hello, maybe? Let me see. Ask to start video. Let's see. Terry? Anything? No! Oh, man. Okay, I wonder if Terry can see. Hello. Okay, well, we got, let's see if Ella rejoins. Terry, use your phone to call the phone number in so you can hear. 
Okay. All right. Hopefully Ella finds her way back in and Anne. Okay. Great, great, great. I'm so, yeah, sometimes you just have to start all over. Sometimes you just got to do it all over. Okay. Maybe Terry can see that. Go to your chat. Slide over. Slide it over. Can you hear me? Oh. Alien two. Can you hear me, Terry? Yes. <gasps> Yay! <laughs> Hallelujah! Okay, we're getting there. Now we're got the grease going. It only took 45 minutes. Grease going. All right. Awesome. <laughs> All right. Terry, while you're while you're on, I would love so um, if there's anything you want to share from the past week or anything that has come up that you want to share that you want to have questions about or anything like that, I'd love to hear um, from you because I know that this was um, a really I really enjoyed um, your comments. I really enjoyed your participation this week. I really. I was very, it really encouraged me how much you participated. And I'm sure your bravery was really appreciated by a lot of the other women in the group as well. So I just want to say. I don't consider it, I don't consider it brave. I consider it being honest. But not everybody is brave enough to share. <laughs> True. <laughs> well, they don't know me. <laughs> I think you and Diana will get along very well. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So you had... I didn't a, hear her, though. You had quite a busy night last night, yes? Or two nights ago now. Oh, me? Yeah. Yes. So are you feeling... Okay like you're recovering a little bit? No, I'm hoping this helps. Okay. Okay. Well, good. So have you checked in with your inner child since your concert experience? No, I haven't had a chance. I don't have any alone time. Okay. We were just talking about that. And <laughs> sometimes you just have to use a potty break. As you check in with your inner child, sometimes if you don't have potty breaks while you're pretending to wash the dishes and you're busy doing mommy tasks, you just have to take a moment for yourself. Um, I it's create gonna take more than a moment, yes, yes, but you know what? All so, I'll a lot of my journey, because I didn't have income coming in when I was first doing my healing work, I had to realize that my journey was not going to be as quick if I like as if I was doing one on one coach. And yeah. So I had to give myself grace and really let myself know that I will heal. Things will shift, but it just might take more than the three months that the advertisements on my Facebook was telling me that it was going to take. <laughs> you think I paid attention to that? <laughs> no, but there's a lot of like, there's a lot of coaches out there and there's a lot of Facebook ads. Oh, see, I never saw those. Oh, I'm having a hell of a time trying to get situated here. <laughs> can you tell? I can what tell. The hell I drop? Even your bed's not working <laughs> with you. I'm just trying to keep my phone charged because it's an old phone. <laughs> Actually, it's a really cool bed because it's adjustable. Oh, there you go. I love it. So, yes, and so even though you're going to need more than tiny bathroom breaks and washing dishes and waking up and 
you know, sitting in bed for a moment before hopping out of bed, these moments do add up. And I want to encourage you that even if you only have brief moments throughout the day, if you're checking in and just dropping in, sometimes just dropping in for a moment, um, sometimes just dropping in for just a moment, and even just on a potty break, just dropping in. Where am I? What are my needs? What is actually going on within me? Am I really that frustrated or am I just hungry? Am I really tired or do I just actually need somebody to listen to me for a second? You know, and, and kind of start, because we're not always frustrated and angry and cranky. Sometimes we have real reasons. <laughs> so I want to hear, were you able, so let's check in, let's everybody check in with their little, with their inner child, okay? So I'm going to have teenagers. Oh yes, teenagers are lovely. Teenagers and three-year-olds, they're very much alike. They very much, you'd think that once they're teenagers, they're off and you have all this space and that's just not true. You just have to watch them more. Yes, three-nager, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, Terry, did I lose you? Terry's having one heck of a time with her uh, technology. All right. So, I'm going to have you guys close your eyes and just drop in for this moment. Hmm. Is this the first time that you've actually relaxed and sat down and closed your eyes and concentrated on yourself for the for the day yes wonderful congratulate yourself for giving yourself a moment to do this because it is not easy to show up it's not always easy to show up know that you are giving yourself amazing grace right now so i want you to close your eyes and i want you to go to that beautiful nature setting that safe space that when you go into this nature setting, you just feel so alive. It's not necessarily comfortable, but you know that you are safe here and you know that there could be magic or something waiting for you at any moment. And as you're looking around, I would like for you to see if there's anything hiding behind the tree or the bush that is closest to you. What is hiding there for you? And if your inner child or that little girl has not met you yet, I would like for you to look around this nature setting and find a version of yourself that is younger than the age of seven. And when you see her, I'd like for you to swoop her up in a great big giant hug and twirl her around with all the energy that you can muster and tell her that she is loved. Tell her that she is perfect just the way she is. Let her know that there's been a lot of people that have told her that she's too much, but you don't believe that's true. Let her know that she can be free, finally, really, fully free to be herself. And even if it's only in this nature setting and with you, that's okay. But let her know that she's finally safe, finally free to really be her whole self. Now, I'd like for you to ask her, what does she need? What does she need from you? What does she need from anybody? What does she want? Does she actually need something that she saw at the store? Does she need something really 
simple like food or a hug or new clothes or new shoes? What does she need? Does she need to know that she's enough? Does she need to be safe? Do you need to build her a special safe space like a tree house? What do you need to do with her tonight? So that she knows that she is no longer going to be needing to search for this aspect outside of herself. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes. And if you're willing to be honest, as Terry says, and you'd like to share, I would love to hear. You can either, I can either unmute what it is that you found that she needs, or you can just share it in the chat box, whatever is most comfortable for you. And then we will be going into fulfilling that need with our higher self. What came through for you? Diana, always. Um, I went, that cove, I really liked the cove. So I didn't see a tree or a bush, but the rocks, it was like a mountain of rocks. And then there's like a little roundabout of rocks and she was hiding behind there, building sandcastles. And um, so I sat down with her and we were building sandcastles and I look up and I see my magical mother, or my higher self up on top of the mountain. Mm -hmm. So it's weird that you say that we're going to have her in there because she was already coming. Mm -hmm. and, um, I, you know, again, and it, she was three years old. So mm -hmm. it's one I have met before. It's the one that wants the answers and wants her mommy and wants to know what's going on and where, where her mommy is. So, but we dug, like my, with my uncle, we used to dig through sand and make holes and we would climb through them. So that's what we did. We made little sand castles and played in the sand and she just, just wanted her mommy. So we, I just gave her a big hug and told her that she's there. She's coming to get you. Yeah. And really for you, her mommy is the magical mommy. Because that is someone who has no trauma or being unsafe or abandonment issues. Yeah. She just doesn't understand what's going on. I don't understand. I don't know what happened, so I don't understand. Yeah. So I can't give her answers that I don't know. And I feel like at a later point, I would actually like to um, have a session with you so that we can go in and bring in your, your, act your actual mom's inner child with her. And they uh -huh. can meet and play. She's had it rough. Yes. Because once you do healing with your parents' inner child, the whole game starts to shift. And I know she feels guilty. Yeah. She doesn't want to remember. She, she doesn't remember. She, and she probably legitimately doesn't remember. Yeah, and, and I've been there, done that, and that's why I understand where she's coming from. Right. So now, sometimes you have to just go to the root of the root. <laughs> Your root cause is her and her child's trauma. And she's had a lot, so. And the, and the inner child of your grandmother and the inner child of your great-grandmother. Like, this is something, your root cause of trauma is often very generationally linked to the trauma that has just been passed down and passed down and passed down. And this work, as you know, has many layers. And so... This is not something, um, <laughs> okay, Terry, I hear you. Um, uh, 
yeah, like generational curses. Yes. Or um, they're just, they're, they're just passed down through the DNA. We think that DNA is just our skin, our hair, but it's very much our upbringing. It's very much how we were raised. It's very much guilt, shame, control. All of those things get passed down generationally as well. And those just create more trauma. Um, I don't know why my screen went black. I don't know either, but I think you're, you're still here, right? Um, yeah, that's okay. So there's this aspect of allowing for those generational themes to start being, uh, a, bring awareness to what they are. Control, overgiving, people pleasing. My mom's a very serve your man. Yeah. Um, and I've noticed that we've had a lot of parallels in our life. And so, you know, she ended up with the man of her dreams and then he died right before the 25th anniversary. And now I ended up with the man of my dreams and I'm like, I don't, you know, I don't want to lose him as early as she did. And so I'm scared to death of that. And she's had a really hard, hard upbringing, like work, 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 work. You're not scared to death of that. You're scared of death of him. Yes. Your thoughts create your reality. He needs to do something. Or not. There's lots of people who are unhealthy that live a very long time. What if you start thinking like that? Well, I, well he's starting to get out of the house now. I mean, I just... Like, I'll have a salad and he'll have a cheeseburger, you know? I just... It is what it is, but you thinking that cheeseburger is killing you is putting thoughts into that cheeseburger that are killing him. Your thoughts are that powerful. And it's not your fault. These are generational things of guilt and shame and judgment. And we put them onto people just as we got put them on ourselves. I just don't want to walk around with blinders on like my mom does. Yeah, I'm going to, Lacey, I'm going to unmute you. Me. Yeah. Um, I'm going to say that my mom is very, uh, like everything her parents went through, she's going to go through that. And um, ever since, so both of her parents died in their 60s, um, pretty young, you know. Um, but father died of lung cancer and her mother died of heart disease. And her mother, um, I mean, she had her first heart attack, like, in her, I don't know, early 20s. Wow. Um, and always had heart issues um, and smoked till the day she died, same as my grandfather. And my mother smoked a lot still. Um, but she, And she, ever since she turned 50, which she's 63 now, I think. Yeah, 63 this year. Ever since she turned 50, literally every day is like, well you know, this is going to happen to me because my parents passed away in their 60s and, like, she's pretty much, like, set herself up, like, her own fate of, like, I'm going to pass away early and there's nothing I can do about it and I have all these ailments. And, like, growing up, my mom was a healthy person. Like, we used to roller skate together. Like, I mean, she had a lot of substance abuse and things like that, but she's, she, she's been um sober for like years like went through AA and she doesn't do meetings and things anymore but she hasn't had a drink in I don't know like at least eight years you know and so she's not I mean she's made some changes in her life to where but she still labels herself like I'm so unhealthy and you know I just can't go to that part because I you know I don't feel good and I need to rest and she just I feel like most of the things that she does actually have are just like 
Because she thinks. Yes. Put that on to me. Like, oh, well, you know, you need to be careful because heart disease skips a generation. Heart disease skips a generation. And like, it's constantly, since I was a child, um, almost like making it like I'm going to have heart disease because heart disease can skip a generation, right? Um, but, you know, I feel like, and even down to, I think, I think this was actually last week in our group, um, I was saying uh, how my mom put the label on like, oh, well, that, that's not for, for our kind of people, you know, it was something about investing. I think I did say that, right? Yeah. So they were, we were talking about like investing and I was talking about like maybe buying some stock and like, you know, trying to, trying to um, create some money for my future. And she's like, oh, well, that's not for people like us is what she said. And I was like, wait a minute, what are people like us? Uh, what does that mean? Um, you know, and I said, I can, I can do whatever I want. Like I can, I can definitely to learn new things and I think that a lot of things um throughout my life rather than letting you know my parents set my future because of the way they handled their life it actually encouraged me to learn even more and grow even more um I was the first um in both you know in, in my, my parents don't have a college education so I went out <laughs> And I got an associate's degree and then I got uh, two bachelor's degrees and I studied abroad and I did all these things. And, you know, in my family, everybody was like, wow, like she's so amazing. And I'm like, well, I'm pretty much any of us can do this, you know, <laughs> just let you know it's an option. <laughs> um, and so I just, I feel like the more I've seen them fail and the more things um, I have seen go wrong for them as they've aged. Um, it, it just encourages me almost more to do better and, um, you know, try things and, you know, save for the future and make my future better, you know, um, rather than being stuck in the same thing that I've seen happen in my family. And I, I have cousins that they're just, you know, they're not living a healthy life. They're not really doing anything to better themselves or their situation. They are in this mode. It, 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 I call it like the poor me mode. Um, victim. Where sometimes the victim I, mean, mode. I have one cousin, we don't talk anymore. Yes, yes, because it's just, we don't talk anymore because my one cousin just became, like she, everything was wrong all the time. And when her father passed away, unfortunately, we ended up, we couldn't talk anymore because it was just, uh, it was a boundary, like we were saying, you know, having boundaries. Um, it was a boundary that, like, I felt like she was sucking all of the life out whenever I was around her. Yeah. Really sad because I love her, and I still wish the best for her. I, like, sent her a gift and never heard back. You know, I know she got it. I was sent from home with other cousins. Um, and, and, you know, it was like my grandmother's diamonds. I made us each... Um, uh, like a like a pendant necklace, a, a glass, you know, kind of locket type thing, uh, with my grandmother's diamonds, her rings, and and uh, a little charm that I chose for each of us. Um, and so I sent it to her and sent it home and was just you know sent it home with my other cousin and my cousin's like yeah I gave it to her. And I was like that's all that matters, you know. I yeah. don't I don't need her to acknowledge it. I just need her to have it, you know. Yeah. So um, yeah. it is unfortunate because sometimes we get stuck like that. Yeah. Did your inner child have a different need than last time? Um, actually, today, it was a little bit more. Inner child is probably a little bit um, and, and just now, she was five. Um, and I could tell because um, her hair was much longer. Um, and she wanted to go on an adventure and again um like diane was saying it was amazing that you brought up um the magical mother showing up because there was a voice uh, so the the child wanted to go on an adventure and there was a voice um i didn't see my magical mother but somebody was telling us well 
every day is an adventure. <laughs> um, so I think uh, I think it was her or, um, you know, and maybe another spirit guide reminding us that it doesn't always need to be, a, you know, a, a journey or an experience to have an adventure. Yeah. Because every day is sort of an adventure in itself if you allow it, you know. I love that. I love that. Anyway, that's a lot of my share. <laughs> I love that. Thank you. I love, yeah, an adventure. And that's, that is a different aspect because um, there was so much more. We just have to have fun. I just need fun. I need to be free. And so an adventure is much more like in a direction. So that's exciting that there's more of a directional aspect going on. So um, perfect. Thank you. Okay. Ella. <laughs> um, this is my first time ever doing this, so I've never spoken to my inner child before. I've uh, gone to therapy and um, kind of spoken to a therapist. Back. But I've, I've spoken to a therapist before and talked about my childhood, but I've never really spoken to my inner child. It's, it's kind of weird. I was um, kind of by a waterfall and um, it was like there was trees and then there was a waterfall and there was a bunch of leaves. Um, she's kind of playing in the water. And um, she, I don't know what age she was because I have no memories because they're basically bad. Um, except for when they lived in South Africa. Um, that's where I was born, by the way. That's where I'm from. Um, and so we were kind of by a waterfall and she was wanting to play in the water and kind of like, um, Annalise, is that how you say your name? Um, kind of like hers, she was holding her hand out and she was telling me to come. She just kept saying, come, come, in, in my uh, accent that I had when I was little. <laughs> and she's saying, come, come. And I was just like, where, like, where are we going? She's just like, come, I got to show you something. Mm. And so I was trying to follow her, and um, I, don't, I don't know where we were going. We kind of just kept walking. Um, when I asked her what she needed, she said she needed uh, to play. And um, she said she needed attention. That's what she told me. She wanted more attention. Um, and she wanted her mom, just like Diana. She was wondering what her mom was. And uh, she was saying that she she wanted her dad to she wanted her mom and her dad and um, she was wondering why her dad was there. Um, but she just kept telling me to come. She just kept oh, come, come. She just kept putting her hand out and we just kept walking. I don't know where we were going. Because we never stopped. We just kept walking until you told us to open our eyes. So, um, But that was the first time I've ever, I've ever talked to her. I love it. Yay, that's so, that's so amazing. And um, you will find out in just a moment because we will tap into our higher self and our higher self often reveals things to us um, and kind of completes this exercise. So instead of doing it in two different days like we did in the exercise, we're going to do the full aspect of it right now and see how it all comes about in a, in this moment. So thank you so much for sharing. And I look forward to hearing kind of what happens as we continue in this visualization with you. All right. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Terry, can I, can you unmute yourself? Can you hear me, Terry? You had your little phone icon next to you. Let's see. Let me ask Terry. Can you unmute yourself? Let's see. I know technology is, we're riding, we're riding on technology's wave right now. 
All right, Terry, I see that your video is good. Can you unmute yourself? Are you good to chat? Let's see, maybe. Maybe, maybe. Let's see if we can hear from her. All right, and Terry, if you can't unmute yourself, if you want to share anything in the chat. Oh, you're back. All right, I know you're, I think your your phone keeps freezing. All right. Terry, are you able to unmute and share? Okay. All right. I'll let, if Terry can hop on in a little bit, I'll have her share. We're going to actually go into another visualization. And we are going to, in this time, we are going to meet our higher self. And our higher self is not necessarily going to just give or meet the need of our inner child, but she's also gonna see underneath the need, the root cause, okay? So we're gonna take it a step further this time. Been trying, call keeps dropping. Can I call on a landline? Yes, absolutely. Um, in the link that I sent you, Terry, there is a phone number to call in. Just call in on that phone number. On the phone number in the message. Okay. All right. Call in on the phone number that you called in in the message. Okay. So let's see if Terry, I know she's been having issues. And she's from the same little mountain community that I left from. And I know that the internet sometimes is not great there. <laughs> Had many a call or tried to. <laughs> so not only is she dealing with Mercury retrograde, but she's dealing with a small little mountain community that oftentimes <laughs> does not have great service. <laughs> so Yes, Terry, if you want to just call, oh, let me, let me, I can unmute you now. Terry, go ahead. I'm, I'm here for a moment. Okay. I would love to hear, what did your, do you have any insights that you want to share about your meeting with your inner child? Um, she still cries. I still cry. Crying is good. Uh, <laughs> does she feel safe in this space with you though oh yeah okay so you might just have to go in and meet with her and just cry yeah and win and I just have to let you know that that was my healing journey. Once a week, I would get into the bath and I would cry. And I did it for eight I'd put months. in the shower. Yep. 18 months. Wow. Okay. Yeah, it's going to take a long time. And I know that. And it could. And then one day I got into the bath and I was ready for it. And a tear came, and then nothing. And I went, oh, is it done? <laughs> is it done? <laughs> and it used to be that I would cry at like trying to communicate something. The tears were just always there. And after I let them all out, they weren't so there. I wasn't so drained all the time. So no, okay. because there's this this release that is waiting to happen and has been needing to happen for a very long time. Hmm. Knowing yep. that you're constantly holding that release back and it's taking all of your energy. Okay. That explains a lot. Yes. And then you're also, so you want feeling, me you're also feeling all of the releases that everybody around you is not releasing and building and calm. Yes. 
on top of the release that you have individually? Oh, well, my granddaughter got a one today. She's happy. Yay! So you had asked me earlier, it's kind of going back a little bit, but you had asked me earlier if I wanted to share my day. Actually, it's been all of July, so it's been wonderful. Because my dad's birthday was July 7th. And then uh, I was all excited. I had shared with Stephanie that I I craved my alone time. I always have. And I was telling Stephanie I was so looking forward to it because my granddaughter was going to go stay at a friend's for a week. And my husband was going back to work. Well, I drove for, well, 100 miles round trip, over 100 miles round trip to drop her off, and they never showed up. And my husband isn't working today or probably tomorrow. So that alone time I've been craving, I don't know when I'll ever find it. I guess I'll go cry in the shower. Turn on some music so you can wail and weep. Turn those chakra meditations way up. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. In fact, luckily, I went to my therapist today after all this happened. So I was telling her about you, and she thinks you're a great idea. So I, I said, I'm not getting rid of you. I'm going to combine you guys. Exactly. I work very well with therapists, yes, because they yeah. they were very different. Yes, but yeah. you have the same goals, and you have a different way of doing it. Yes. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Hold on. What did you, uh, mine is the same, yeah. Therapists like me, because you go back and you go, oh, I, I had some shifts. And they're like, okay, great. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't think that she would care because she's really open about that kind of stuff. So I was telling her, and I said, yeah. I was telling her about the dance, and she was laughing. I was telling her all about pulling the cords out. She goes, I like that. So. <laughs> Different perspective. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it works. So. I think you gave me an idea. I need a... to start working with therapists. Yes. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Working toward the same goal. Yeah. Because, I mean, as therapists, they they often have, um, yeah, <laughs> get that shit out and close that shit up. I was feeling it. Yeah. My magical mother came out and she was, she does the, the one four on people. She doesn't mess around, man. <laughs> Good. 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 <laughs> I might have been cussing up a storm today. Yeah. Oh, I love it. So that's fantastic because it is. It's all about getting the shift so that you can just kind of tweak. If you can tweak what you're doing, just, a, you know, a mustard seed. That's all it takes is just this little shift. And all of a sudden you can kind of step into a new perspective of it. I think if I hold the phone over here, it'll stay hooked. Okay. How crazy is that? One, there's only one spot. It's because you live in a mountain house. Yes, in a valley in the mountains. There's only one reception spot. <laughs> yeah. I have one bar right now for the phone. <laughs> I, you, I know. I, I was telling them when you were trying to get on and it was freezing on you, I was like, she lives in the same mountain, and there's probably one spot that she can she can get. <laughs> yeah, you were my massage therapist, so there you go, people. Yes, we're all. That's we're how all I first met you. Connected. I was telling my husband, I was like, "Do you remember when I worked for that weird chiropractor, but I met the most awesome people?" <laughs> <laughs> That's me. <laughs> I go, that's where Terry is from. That's in this group. And he's like, whoa. I go, I know. You never know where you're going to meet. And Lacey and I went to elementary school together. That's how I know Lacey. Oh, how fun. So 
there yeah doing this work has created so many amazing deeper connections with the most amazing people that I've I've gotten to interact with in other aspects of my life and now I get to have more interactions with doing this so yeah yeah, yeah. so I've been telling people about you one friend is open to it I think and one said, that doesn't sound like it's for me. And I'm like, yeah, okay. You snooze, you lose. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I got a, I got a few more messages about my Okay, witchcraft. but real quick, yeah. that one friend that said that, I know she's hurting inside because I can feel it. Yeah. But she hasn't started talking to me yet. Yeah. So anyway, goodbye. And, no, and not she, goodbye. And she might not. This is, so as an empath, you are going to be meeting a lot of people who are hurting. And they're either going to wake up or they're going to die. Yeah. So, She's drinking a lot. Yes. Yes. I know the science because I used to do it. Yep. And you'll probably be hearing a lot more. I mean, it is, it's the most unique time in history besides like the dark ages of the plague when people were just like, and that was the same wake up or die because the Renaissance happened. Yeah. So. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to try something and see if it works. Okay. Does that look familiar? Oh, let me, hold on. Let me. Could, I oh, took it off of there. It was uh, outside my house. I'm in a ah. tree house, guys. Oh, I love it. I do it. But I don't want to hurt the tree. When you were talking about putting your hands on the tree, I'm like, I don't want to hurt the tree. <laughs> yeah. And I, so okay. plants are much more empathic. Don't give your energy to plants. You no, know, that's all that stuff we were getting rid of. And I'm like, hey. Yeah. Plants uh, cannot, isn't that going to hurt it? No. So I believe that um, trees, like our carbon dioxide that we breathe out and they give us oxygen, our negative emotions, they can actually use that as energy and give us back energy that's very grounded. So our frantic overwhelm energy is like earth like sky energy the thunderstorms the electricity and the lightning if you ever been in an electrical storm that frantic frenetic energy that's like ah they get that but they can ground with it and so it's the same kind of energy that we have when we're angry or frustrated pushing that into a tree they use that and transmute that so effortlessly into their roots and then can give us grounding. So that is kind of what I've gotten from doing work with trees and doing meditations and doing the work that I've done. Um, I'm going to unmute you. I see you, Ella. All right. Stupid. Uh computer keeps going black because it's really dark in here. My daughter's asleep on my chest. But um, I'm actually a barefooter and I've, I've learned a lot about that. Nature is very, very, very calming and it's great for empaths because it's literally like I could touch the water outside like a stream or a river and it just immediately calms me if I'm mad. Um, I could just walk outside and stand in the grass and touch a flower and it immediately calms me. Um, when it rains, oh my gosh, I love when it rains. I love to ground in the rain. That is my favorite. People think I'm crazy because I'll literally stand outside in the thunderstorm <laughs> and like dance and just like, yes, that is me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Storm dancing in the rain because it's, it's just amazing. But yeah, I'm a barefoot. I've been going barefoot straight for almost a, uh, for over a year and it, it has really, really helped. Besides, yeah. I mean, being in the stores and stuff, but being outside and grounding with the earth, it, it's amazing. And then what part, of, where do you live, Ella? We actually just moved to Colorado. Um, we used to live in Texas. Okay. We just moved to Colorado, and it's amazing. Uh, yeah. I want to go into the mountains and actually 
go around there one day when I get when I get the chance. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Yes. And yeah, I did a whole day in the five day series about nature and I gave a couple exercises grounding and being barefoot was definitely one of them and then actually doing an energy exchange with a tree was another one which is what terry was talking about how she didn't want to hurt the trees but she um i so i don't know somehow i communicate with the plants i don't know how i don't know if it's real i don't really care at this point anymore and so I hear weird things from trees and plants and they say things to me and I look at them and I know how to use them and I don't know why I know how to use them. And then I look it up and I'm like, Oh, you're useful. I knew it. You know? <laughs> and, um, right. So there's, there's definitely a relationship that um, is very much needed now for us as empaths. Again, we're either going to awaken and heal or we're going to wither away there's like it's very black and white right now and nature is very much a part of that of reconnecting rewilding that's why it's such a big thing right now to really step out of our comfort zone and be in nature because nature is not necessarily comfortable all the time right yeah so beautiful thank you so much do you have your videos because i see you record them do you can i watch your nature one on something is it is it yes. in our group or anything yeah i got your email address so i will be sending that to you okay uh -huh. thank you so much yes definitely all right um so I think that large old trees are wise and definitely can take the energy we give and disperse it without being hurt. Maybe not baby trees. Yeah, no. And again, I like to ask, I like to ask them, you know, like, can, can I exchange energy with you? And you'll feel it. You'll be like, Oh no. Okay. okay I got it. You know, <laughs> I kind of yell at you. You're like, Oh, you know, like, um, it was funny. I was the, the tree out there. I was like, I want to exchange energy with you. And it was like, no, and I was like trying to demonstrate and I'm like, okay, I won't actually give anything to you. Can I just demonstrate on you? And then it was finally like, okay, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do anything. <laughs> They're very trees out here. Diana. Okay, about that. I didn't exactly put it into a tree. I was sitting on my bed and, and no, I was in the living room and I just kind of put it out there. I didn't put it into anything. Could that cause chaos in my home? Yes. Because my son has been on a rampage trying to argue with me, and I'm not feeding into it. So what happened when you did that was you sent it into all of your cushions. It's now trapped in all of your walls. You sent it so into I my house again. Every cloth absorbing aspect got all of that energy. So it's really important with your awareness, with your emotions, that you're, you're putting them into things properly so that you're not affecting your environment anymore, such as an Epsom salt bath, such as a tree, such as grounding in the, the earth, sending it into the earth. Because my son looked at me and talked to me like he was an abusive husband. Yeah. And it's like his eyes, he, it, he was like glazed over. Yeah. And I was like, don't talk to me that way. And he like did it again. I was like, don't talk to me that way. Yeah. And I had to kind of walk away from it and just let him have it because it wasn't worth the fight. And I was, I didn't want to feed the negativity Yes. and fight with him. So I need to do this again and get it out of the home. Yes. Okay. Yes. And so a lot of times us as empaths, it's not just our own energy that we're gathering and absorbing and putting into that tree either. It's all the energy from every single person that we bumped energies up with at the supermarket. Every single person that we bumped energies up with as we were driving by and they looked at us. So there's a lot more that we're collecting and that we need to be dispersing, which is why a weekly Epsom salt or Himalayan salt bath is very necessary when you're doing and starting this deep work. I'll keep doing it. Yeah, because the Epsom salt and the Himalayan salt neutralizes. 
Same with the selenite wand. That's why the selenite wands are so powerful because they neutralize the energy. They're not positive or negative anymore. It's just neutral. And doing a whole body scan. Yeah, 50,000 people on Saturday were bumping your energies, man. You were bumping energies with all of them, Terry. <laughs> you were getting bumping it. Getting it. <laughs> Yeah. I avoid supermarket. <laughs> yeah. You know, you're bumping, you're bumping, you're interacting and you're having real inner energetic relationships with people every time, you know, inside of your house and outside of yourself. So that's why it's so important to know your energy centers, to just start creating awareness around them to connect with what is really a need and then moving forward, cleaning your chakras, going out into nature. All of these steps are now needing to be a part of your regular ritual and rhythms so that you stay energized and no longer depleted all the time. So I want, I, to, oh, go ahead. I did sage after. I got choked. Yes. And I don't feel that negative energy anymore. Yeah. So that one's gone. I think I just pushed what I had in me out and just let it go. Yeah. Well, you know that your son is very sensitive to your energies. Very. And, and he's going to go off to college. And so he's got all this anxiety yeah. going on too. And every, it's just it's setting him off left and right. Mm. I'm so glad you found me, Ella. Yay. Welcome. 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 I'm Stand just, for me. <laughs> yeah. We all find each other. We all find each other. So I want to, um, right. We all, we all find each other exactly when we need to find each other. So um, I'm going to have us close our eyes because I want to make sure to tap into our magical mother and get the wisdom that she has to share with us. And so go ahead and close your eyes. And I want you to really just be present in this moment. Be really present. I want you to feel your butt on whatever seat it is. Feel your body, the heaviness of it. Feel your arms. Just feel this moment, this space, the weight and the space that your body takes up in this world. And really feel the breath going through your body. Feel the breath going into your nose, oxygenating your entire body. And as you bring your attention up to your third eye or right into the middle of your forehead, I want you to begin to see a color of light. And as you see this color of light beginning to get bigger and bigger or maybe softer and rounder, begin to see that little girl that you met earlier inside of this beautiful light. And as you see this little girl in the center, I want you to see you are as you are in this exact moment with that little girl. And now I want you to have the aspect of yourself what is called your higher self, or what I like to call your magical mother. This is the part of you that is whole. This is your soul self. This is the part of you that has never experienced any trauma because this is the entity of your spirit that is. It cannot be harmed or damaged. It is whole. And I would like for you to notice this part of yourself coming into the space. And as she comes into the space, I want you to just instantly feel what happens in your body. 
feel the lightness, feel the peace, feel those needs that you had expressed earlier, just being completely taken care of. You're getting this piercing attention as she's looking right at you. You're getting all of, you can feel your heart actually filling up with love. Beautiful motherly love. You're feeling so nourished and safe and valued. And it's as if this whole, it's not just you getting filled up with this. It's not just your inner child getting filled up. It's this entire ball of light that is just overflowing with all of your needs being met. And as you sit, and if anything comes up, bubbles up to the surface, that might still be need, needed. You feel that is no longer a burden. You feel like this space is overwhelming, overloading, overfilling. The battery is charged to capacity. And it is just outpouring now. It is now bubbling out of you bubbling out of your space, filling up the room around you. And it's this space that feels so good. It's going from corner to corner now. It's filling up your entire house now. And as it begins to pool out of your house, it's filling up your entire community. So no matter where you go in your community, you have touched every aspect of where you go. And now I want you to bring it back in. Bring it back in, back into your house. Bring it back in to your room that you're in. Bring it back into your body and bring it back into your heart. And this is the capacity that you have to now share and give to others as you have given to yourself, but only when you are overflowing and only when you want to, because it is yours to give as freely or not. It is your choice but now you can always be filled with it. And when you're ready, take a nice deep breath and integrate this into your being. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes. So we are going to end with that. Does anybody have something that they would like to share before we go though? Yes, Ella. Sorry, I'm feeding her. <laughs> That's okay. No apology necessary for that. Yeah, I know we're all moms, so um, <laughs> I don't want her to start screaming in y'all's ear. But um, so it was pretty cool. So she, um, she came to me again and grabbed her hand. She still wanted me to go, uh, go with her. And um, whenever you were talking about everything overflowing, it was weird. I saw a flame. Mm. It was like a, a bluish red flame, but it was a really, really big flame. And it was almost, I, don't, I couldn't really tell if it was over my heart or my body, but it was just a really big flame. And then as you started saying with overflowing and everything like that, it was like, I saw the waves of that. Um, I did saw, I did see the light as well, and then um, 
whenever you told us to like pull it all back and pull it back into our hearts, it was almost like I saw a lock and key. Like I locked it inside and I, I locked it with a key and I, I took the key. I don't know where I put the key, <laughs> but, but I, uh, I had a lock and key and um, yeah, I don't know where the key is, but that, that's what happened for me. It was, it was, pretty, it was pretty amazing. <laughs> that's awesome. And you'll find the key when you need it. Otherwise, it's, it's, some, it's what you need right now. And you've been, you've been sharing all of your energy with everybody around you for so long, being so depleted, that you needed to hide that key for a little bit and save this for yourself. And that's not being selfish. That's really you now filling yourself up so that you can give. And I don't leave the house very often, like I'm a major home body. And I always wonder why, because I'm not antisocial. I'm really outgoing. But oh my gosh, whenever I go into public or if I go around people, I get so drained. And now I realize why. I didn't realize, even if I don't talk to people, that I'm still taking on their energies. And I'm just like, wow. Now yeah. that I know, I'm just like, ah. <laughs> now I know I'm so drained all the time. Right. Because I mean, it's not only happening inside of your house, but it's happening if you step outside, it's even more so. And it's just, it's bombarding, especially because what happens, especially when you're nursing and you have a baby with you, you're holding, it's almost like you have them within your energy as well. So you're not only holding space for the baby because you can't close off to them when you're nursing, you can only open. And so you're, you're wide open when you have the baby and you're nursing and it's like this permeable, you are a permeable structure right now. Wow. Everything is just like coming right through you. So um, in the day five video that I'll be sending you, there's auric dancing and it shows you how to start closing up your energy centers so that people aren't just coming through. And so when you nurse, what you'll want to do is you'll actually want to go through and just open up all your chakras to nurse your baby. And then when you're done, you'll close them up and it'll be a really beautiful practice and a ritual that you'll be able to start practicing to create that sacred space of bonding. Okay. Um, uh, I, don't, I don't know if this is weird for you. I, I use crystals. Do you use crystals? Yes. Should I know? We all love crystals. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you are in you are in crystal lovers heaven. Yes. I'm sure that yeah, she's got her crystals right on the <laughs> go. I have at the moment more rose quartz and amethyst because I just started my collection, but those are really calming and peaceful yeah. for me. So I love those. Yeah. And um sometimes using tools i like to call them tools crystals are very much tools okay. and using things um externally to you especially when you first start is really helpful because it helps you stay present okay and so because you've experienced a lot of trauma in childhood i have a feeling that dissociation comes very easily for you you can yes. kind of just distract and check out and it's very easy for you to just like i'm gone yep Goodbye. <laughs> see you when I see you. <laughs> Don't know me. Don't know that. But yes. Yes. So, <laughs> yes. Um, so tools, having something physically heavy in your hand can be really um, a way to create that space for yourself. And does it ground me oh. as well to carry them? Uh, rose quartz and amethyst will not ground you. Okay. They are higher chakra stones, so they are your heart and your uh, third eye, so they will make you feel more dissociated until you start grounding more. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> no, but that's okay. Like, um, not all dissociating is bad. It's the coping oh. skill that you've learned that, have kept, that has kept you alive until yeah. now. <laughs> yeah. So, I like to feel a lot of gratitude towards my dissociation. <laughs> I like to thank it because it comes at beautiful times when I cannot cope. Yes. And so, and as you learn these other coping skills, you will be able to replace it, but know that dissociating is not always bad. It has very much kept you alive. And that's why you're, that's why grounding is so important to you. Okay. Yeah, I didn't know that. Do yeah. we do we feel people's energies through the internet too? Like if oh yes, oh like yes, yeah. 
feel that they're like down at the moment, even though they're pretending to be happy and they're absolutely they're okay. Okay, I was uh, about that too. Terry, how often are you scrolling through Facebook? Because every post that you are seeing, you're gathering their energy as well. Oh my god! I just realized that. Like that's a huge empathic aspect. So as you're scrolling, every post and every person, bink, energy bumping. So you don't even have to leave your house to bump up with a thousand people every day. Yeah, I took a three-week break, and now I know why it was so, yeah, well, not calm, but it was calmer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't taking, wow, okay. So um, I am a total Facebook addict as well. I love the, the uh, bing. I love seeing it, especially like as I'm doing a challenge or something, I'm like, oh, for them like I get all like excited and like read every person's you know it's like it's just an exciting thing so I have to be really mindful of that too like I have to really like when I close it I have to like okay nope I'm not taking everybody when the next time I go on like I really try to only go on three times a day you know or but I, I get lured into it too so just being really mindful of like nope I'm gonna just separate from everybody's post that I just saw I'm not gonna take this with me the rest of the day being mindful that you every energetic action and interaction that you have whether you want it or not is being connected to you okay yeah yeah i was wondering about that um, yeah cleanse cle cleanse 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 yes <laughs> so just doing detox baths help daily like with the uh, with the uh, epsom salts yes okay. yes um Yes. And if we can't take a full on bath, because it's kind of hard with her sometimes. Yes. Uh, what about soaking my feet? Would that be Absolutely. Good? Absolutely. Yeah. And um, I would sometimes just do, um, yeah. And like I said, I only did it once a week. That was all I could fit in. Yeah, that's basically probably all I'm going to be. You know what I mean? So keep really realistic, practical really like things that you can be like, okay, you know what? I know that my partner is here this night every week. I can slip into the bath for 30 minutes and, and I think everything would be okay without me. You know what I mean? And most likely it won't be. Everything will fall apart and you'll get out of the bath and have a huge chaos to deal with. And just know that that's okay. <laughs> and that it, you know, as they grow older, it'll change. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I try to do it when they're asleep, but even then, yeah, they, they tend to wake up. Just just know it's that can be and that's okay. And Terry has experienced that this week too. You know, she had all this preparation for alone time and then chaos. They all just oh, I heard. <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah, Florida water, selenite. Yeah, I reset many times a day now. Good, good, good. Yes, yes, I love that. Yeah. And so um even just eating a piece of fruit. Eating fruit throughout the day is a great detox. Okay. A great energetic detox. So um, I often go to apples because they're super cheap. And I know that if we're going to be out and about, I throw an apple in my kid's face and make them eat an apple because I know it'll collect and like um, pull out because all of my kids are empaths as well. And my husband. So, um, so salad, tea, mint leaves. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, so little things like that throughout the day, knowing that anytime you want a piece of fruit or that you eat a piece of fruit, it's cleansing and getting rid of those toxicity and those energies as well. Okay, yeah, I, I eat fruit at least like four times a week until we run out. And we don't yeah. live in our own house yet, so I can't really smudge here, but when we do get our own, I would definitely do that um, yeah. constantly. <laughs> yeah, so because you can't smudge, I like to discreetly put salt shakers. So you can just get like 99 cents for salt shakers and fill them up with salt and put them in each room and they will actually gather the energy, the negative energy in the room. Okay. And uh, then just change them out once a month. And is it Himalayan pink salt or does, does it matter what kind of salt? Salt, salt is salt. Salt okay. loves to, you'll see it, it'll be all clumpy and hard and yeah. Okay. So yeah, something that's really Himalayan. discreet that, yeah. Okay. <laughs> good, good good yay all right i know um all right i'm gonna hop over to terry she said she has a question go ahead terry 
I am wondering if I would be able to share those the five day em- empath thing with my therapist. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> you uh, just to show her what I'm doing. Yeah, if you want to, if you have her email, you could just forward the email to her. Yeah. Yeah. I'll get her email and just let, just so she knows what I'm doing. Yeah. Show her the woo woo side of things. Some some therapists. Not the woo woo. What did I tell you about woo woo? <laughs> it's not woo woo. No, it's not woo woo. Some explain to them what woo woo is in my house. What? It, oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's right. It is not woo woo. Yeah. Yeah. But I know who's listening to their to their output, so yep. I don't want to say that to them. Not witches either, right? Oh my gosh, I had yeah. I think I had like three more messages about what I'm doing closely resembles witchcraft, and I just they just couldn't do it. They couldn't follow me. They couldn't. Don't I, bother. I go. I go. That's okay. I will, I will remove you from the group. That's, that's okay. And it was just really funny. Like, I don't know where, because there's energy and plants, it's suddenly witchcraft, but I don't know. Yeah. Because I, because I used it. It's completely different. Yeah. Because I use crystals. I don't know. Things that God made because I use the resources that God made. I'm, I'm suddenly a witch. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I should not use those God-made tools. <laughs> God didn't make those to heal people. God made those to look pretty. <laughs> I'm not muted. Calm down, woman. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. Yes. So, um, yeah, I would, and I would love to, if she, I would love to hear her feedback if she has any. That's, that's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. And then maybe, because she owns this therapist group. Oh. Oh. Yeah. I, I have had so many people who are like, yeah, I shared what you did with them. And they were like so excited about it. And I, and I, yeah, I just need to start working with the therapists because they can then teach these tools to a lot more people. Whereas yeah. I'm, I'm me and that's, you know, there's only certain, I'd be at a festival with, you know, 60,000 people and 15 people come Ow. out. 15. They're like, I just need to stand with you for a second. I go, I know. That's why I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> that's, oh, that's, that's cool. I drove all the way to Delaware was so you could stand with me for a moment. <laughs> <laughs> yes so that's exciting so thank you I just want to say thank you to all of you guys for being present here for taking the time to create space to be a part of this and for again sharing and your experiences because I will give this recording to those that were not able to be live with us so they will be able to get a little bit more of this practical aspect um and it's such an exciting journey to be on um so after this if there if um i know a couple of you have asked for um asked about private sessions but know that in august we'll be doing another five-day challenge september we'll be doing a 30-day challenge together And then in the new year, I will be starting a new group and hopefully have my book out as well. Um, So there's things in the works. And while it might not be immediately, know that we will be doing this journey. And healing's not always immediate anyway. But the shifts can happen. Yeah, can't wait for September. Yeah. Yay. Um, Know that these shifts are powerful in and of themselves. Um, And so all of this aspect is happening. And if you have, if you have people that you are, know that are interested in this, please have them join the Magical Mothering Group. 
that's fantastic. Um, it's a really safe, sacred space that I do not allow any riffraff in. So you're able to actually share <laughs> things and um, there's only love and acceptance there. So <laughs> you're not riffraff. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> All right, guys. So, um, yeah, again, I'll be in the Magical Mothering Facebook group and we'll, I cuss a lot. Yeah, I think we all have those moments. My kids, they cuss appropriately, I say. You know, they're, they're allowed to cuss. Like my son, he walks out sometimes, oh my fuck, it's raining. You know, things like that where it's like, it just kind of goes. That we all do, right? Yeah, yeah. And like, there's just certain things where like, Skyann will just be like, man, I'm feeling kind of shitty today. Yeah, it's one of those days, you know? There's, it's, it's if it's in our language, it's, it's in their language. You should see how you do, look in that lighting, right? I was raised where it's okay. Yeah, I'm all like, I feel like I'm doing like a seance or something like, Ew, get the candles out, we're gonna summon. No, that would be too close to witchiness. So they're not even witchy. People that summon aren't even witchy. They're like totally different. Whatever, I'm mixing up all of my, my things. <laughs> my son yelled, fucking shit when he had a body accident. <laughs> my sister-in-law, you can't say that. I can say it to my pee. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Yeah, you know, when you when you create awareness around things not everything is so bad or naughty or things like that so uh thank you so much ladies i really appreciate you being here and i know that um you guys all participated and had a great time here so i will be seeing you all soon and stay in touch and we'll continue this journey. So good night for now. I think my kids are like, can we come in? Can we go to bed? <gasps> Goodbye. Good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Love you. All right. Good night, guys. Yeah.